So you have a Tesla 3 or Y and your frunk won't close all the way, no matter what you do. Well, hang tight. I'm gonna show you how to fix it. So you've got this Tesla Model 3 or Model Y and this won't close all the way. Well, here's how we're gonna fix it. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna remove this entire thing. Don't get worried, it's only a few bolts. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. There's two 10 millimeter bolts right there. You're gonna pull up on this seal and take it all the way out. And then you're gonna pop off this panel by lifting here and just popping it off carefully. And then this whole thing is gonna come out. I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you what's going on inside. Hey everybody, this is a Model Y frunk and I had an issue with my frunk not closing all the way. So it would latch part way, but not the rest of the way. Let me demonstrate. So this is the mechanism here. Uh, this cable is for the sensor to detect if the frunk is closed all the way. And this is the release cable. And this down here is the release actuator. So when you press the button on your phone or you press the button in the car, this actuator actually will pull on this cable. Now what that will do is unlock your frunk. When you put the frunk back down, um, your frunk actually pulls down. Let me see if I can show you this. The frunk is actually closed by the rod, which pulls down into this channel. And there's two positions. There's the partially closed position where it goes click and you'll see that it's partially down. And then the rest of the way down is closing all the way. And the problem I was having was it would go to the first click, but not the second click. And that's because this mechanism was a little bit frozen. I live in Canada and the weather here, it causes that. So I'm going to show you how to fix this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open, take these two screw, these two bolts out right here. Okay. And the minute you do that, this whole thing is going to become free. Now, when you flip this over, what you're going to see is this is the mechanism that does all of that. So here's the cable and here's the little ball and it actually pulls on that. And what that does is release it. Now, what was happening was mine was not closing all the way. And because of that, um, this little switch here was not detecting that the frunk was closed. So when it's all the way down, let's see if I can get it all the way down for you. You'll see that this is sitting on this little micro switch there. And that's what's telling it that the frunk is closed. Mine wouldn't stay down all the way. This mechanism here, uh, this mechanism here was a little bit frozen. So I'm going to show you what I did to fix that. First, let me open the mechanism up. So what you saw right there, what you saw was this cable getting pulled on and that's actually opening this whole mechanism here. And what I found was this mechanism was not moving back and forth freely. So let's clean that up. This is a penetrating lubricant. Um, you really want to avoid just using this because it's really lightweight. This is good for freeing it up and cleaning it, but it's not good for lubricating. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray a little bit of this on the spring. We're gonna avoid the sensor. So a little bit there on the spring parts. Then I'm gonna take a little shop towel here and I'm gonna sort of clean this up a bit. I'm also gonna clean this cable here right on the end. Okay. And then what I, what I wanna show you as well is where this ball connects to the spring very carefully, watch your fingers, wiggle that back and forth like this, okay? See, like that, wiggle that back and forth. And I want you to push it in all directions, all the way forward, all the way back and keep on doing that. And I can even feel that freeing up even more because all of this sort of goo in here, it, it gets hard, um, that grease, it gets hard, it gets dirt in it. And then that's what's stopping it from moving around. So we're gonna put a little bit more in there clean it up even more. We're going to move it back and forth. Yeah, that feels nice and free now. Okay. So now that we've got it free, I'm going to just kind of wipe it down a bit. Get a lot of that grease out of there. And now I'm going to go and get like some real grease to actually put on this, but we're only going to use a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay. So what I've got here is a little bit of bearing grease. I'm not really sure this is the right stuff to use, but it's what I've got. So I'm going to use it, but we're only going to use a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit of this first of all, on this cable. So I want to make sure the cable has a little bit on it. I'm going to sort of wipe it in amongst the springs down in the bottom. But I'm like super light coat. I don't want to leave very much there. 
just kind of helping it stay lubricated here. And then on the mainspring, just a little coating there. Perfect. Now that I've done that, now we're gonna actuate this by hand and get some of that grease in there. So yeah, that's really good. So move more of that grease around there. I'm holding it open, spreading. And I only used a tiny amount, right? And that cable has some grease on it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actuate the lock here. I'm gonna press the uh, emergency button. Excellent, everything is moving really good. So now let's try locking it all the way so you can make see if it works. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna pretend that this screwdriver is my front closing. Now the whole lock is upside down right now. Okay, so there's one click and two clicks. And you can see it's two clicks now, and you can see that the switch is depressed. And now I'm gonna open it. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna put it all back together. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put this back on. Two 10 millimeter bolts is all you need here. I recommend using the longest ratchet you possibly can because it's completely unnecessary. Now, don't tighten this up all the way. Just bottom them out first. Because this is actually the latch adjustment and you want to make sure that it's adjusted um, ideally exactly where it came off so what you'll notice is um, actually let me back it off just a bit what you'll notice is this whole thing can kind of move up and down okay so if you put it back together and your front doesn't close right you may have to adjust this so what i'm going to do is there's a couple little blue marks here from where you can see from when they assembled it. I'm going to make an attempt to try to get it in about the same spot. And I want to make it reasonably straight on both sides so it's about the same height here. I'm actually looking here and here. Looks pretty good. Probably 35 to 45 you know, the usual foot poundage. Okay, so now that we have this in here, now we're gonna actually test it out and see uh, if the tr trunk will close. So I'll leave you guys in here and let's see what happens. And look at that, it worked perfectly. Uh, if, if when you do this, your frunk, the front, the line on your hood doesn't line up uh, with here, um, you can move this down and that'll pull your hood down a little bit. So now I know that this is really good. So now we're going to tighten these back up. I'm just gonna make sure that they've got a little bit of extra tightening on them now that I know that they're right. Okay, so the next step is gonna to be to uh, put everything back together, put the hood back in. There's like a hundred videos online that show you how to do that, so I'm not gonna show you that. So hopefully this helps somebody out and uh, saves you a trip to the service center or even on a road trip, saves you from doing the rest of your road trip at 24 kilometers an hour. Take it easy.